done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Molly, what do you make of that? I'm surprised, frankly, that she doesn't have uh, more to say about this, given that she and her campaign know that this is one of the main questions that voters have about her. It, and, and one of the main things she's been trying to establish as part of her candidacy is the idea that she would represent a break from the past four years and to not be able to come up with something to say in that moment. Uh, she continues to, to not be particularly nimble on her feet in a lot of these interviews. And this is a very obvious question that gave her an opportunity, frankly, uh, to differentiate herself uh, in a way that, that, that would have made news, that would have answered, I think, the curiosity mm. of a lot of voters who want to know how she would lead differently. And, and she's not very specific in, in, in laying that out. And she can't point to a decision she would she would have made differently, uh, which, you know, in an electorate that thinks that, that, that doesn't like the way this administration has led and that doesn't like the track that the country is on, that may not be a very satisfactory answer. I mean, it this morning, Kamala Harris had an interview with The View. I, 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 wait a second. I am shocked that we don't have a whole lot of The View watchers here in the Motor City. Now, I got to tell you, to, to go into The View as a Democrat politician, that's like the easiest interview in the entire world, right? I mean, if I walked into The View, that'd be like, well, that'd be like walking into this room with an Ohio State jersey, right? That's something you just, you just don't do. But she, but she walks into The View, and you would think that would be an interview, and you know what they asked her? They gave her a softball, an easy question, really propaganda. They, they, they said, can you name a single thing where you disagree with Joe Biden? Now, let's back up for a second, because remember, Kamala Harris's entire campaign is to pretend that she hasn't been the vice president for the last three and a half years. You know, she stands up before crowds and she'll say, on day one, we're gonna tackle the affordability crisis. On day one, we're gonna secure the border. And, and you listen to her for five minutes and you think, Kamala, are you gonna vote for Donald Trump? Because you've been vice president for 1,400 days, you haven't done anything. So you think after all this time, all this time of thinking about how she would do things differently from Joe Biden, she would have a well-prepared answer for the interviewers on The View. Well, they ask her one thing you would do differently from Joe Biden. You know what she says? I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. <laughs> clear from now and we thought that the worst thing that was going to happen to her this week was when her teleprompter failed and she couldn't ad lib. And did you all see Magic Johnson? Yeah. Remember his number? 32. Yeah. Today we got 32 days until the election. 
Jackson. <laughs> So 32 days, 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right, 32 days. Well, it got worse. She was interviewed on 60 Minutes in the United States and it's the toughest interview that she's got. And I've got to say well done to the reporter who did it. Not perfect, but hey, uh, this is the best we're going to get. He followed up. He asked her a tough question, he followed up and he called BS on her. For example, all of the ideas that she has, how are you going to pay for it? My plan is about saying that when you invest in small businesses, uh -huh. you invest in the middle class uh -huh. and you strengthen America's economy. Small businesses are part of the backbone of America's economy. But, but pardon me, Madam Vice President, I, the, the question was, how are you going to pay for it? Hey. Well, one of the things is I'm going to make sure that the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. Ah. It is not right that teachers and nurses and firefighters are paying a higher tax rate than billionaires and the biggest corporations. But, and but, I plan on making oh, that oh. fair. Get, but we're this. dealing with the real world here. But the oh. real world includes... How are you going to get this through Congress? You know, when you talk quietly with a lot of folks in Congress, they know exactly what I'm talking about because their constituents know exactly what I'm talking blah, blah, about. Blah, 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 garbage, 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 garbage. And again, the reporter was great because, again, in all the interviews that she's done, there's sort of a question about, look, you've changed your mind a lot from the time you ran for president for when you were vice president, and now all of those positions we know you definitely lose on, so you've put out all these statements that you've changed your mind on this issue and that issue. Um, but this is the best version of that question that he's thrown at her. Let me tell you what your critics and the columnists say. OK. They say that the reason so many voters don't know you is that you have changed your position on so many things. You were against fracking, now you're for it. You supported looser immigration policies, now you're tightening them up. You were for Medicare for all. Now you're not. So many that people don't truly I can't know what you believe answer. or what you stand for. Middle and stump, I know you've heard well that. In the last four years, I have been Vice President of the United States. And I have been traveling our country. And I have been listening to folks mm -hmm. and seeking what is possible in terms of common ground. I believe in building consensus. Do you? We are a diverse people geographically, regionally, in terms of where we are in our backgrounds. And By the way, that what was the American minutes, people do right. want is that we have leaders who can build consensus, where we can figure out compromise but why do you and understand it's not a bad the opposite thing, of what you as long believe as you don't before. compromise your values to find common sense solutions. And that has been my approach. And then finally, on the issue of immigration, where the reality is millions of people have been able to, as a result of the policies of Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, border czar, whether she wants to admit it or not, they have entered the country illegally. Now, again, migration, fantastic. Illegal migration, not great. This reporter, the best question, hits her right between the eyes. There was an historic flood of undocumented immigrants coming across the border the first three years of your administration. As a matter Millions. of fact, arrivals quadrupled. Correct. From the last year of President Trump. Was it a mistake? Good. To loosen the immigration policies Good. as much as you did? Great. It's a long standing problem. And the solutions you are at hand. And from day one, literally, you signed we executive orders undoing solutions. all of the Trump stuff. What I was asking was, was it a mistake Don't give up, to kind of allow that flood to happen in the first place? I Good. think the policies that we have been proposing are about fixing a problem, not promoting a problem. OK? But, but the, the numbers the, did quadruple. And the oh. numbers Under today, because of what we have done, we have cut the flow of illegal immigration Millions. by half. Should you we have, have done cut that? the Should flow of fentanyl that? by half, but we need Congress to be able oh, it's Cong to, Congress. Act, Congress. to actually fix the problem.
you have accused Donald Trump of using racist tropes when it comes to Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio. Yeah, well, surprise, surprise. Um, well done. Reporter, spectacular. Her performance, terrible. You can see the frighten behind her eyes, which is why the interview she's doing in the next 24 hours, Howard Stern, who has said that he hates Trump supporters, not just Trump, and Stephen Colbert, who, of course, had people dress up like the vaccine. So we get the cuddles that she's going to get. But at least a serious interview and surprise, surprise, the mental Jenga that she's playing, the tower fell down.